hello happy saturday i hope you're having a good one so far good morning good afternoon wherever you are in the world i am happy to be back today is day 12 i can't believe we've been here for 12 days straight and we still have some more days to go but i hope your week was great share in the comments something that you accomplished this week or something you're going to accomplish this weekend my name is Omotola the Great. I am the lead consultant here at the Funding Magnet and our mission for 2022 is to support 1,000 non-profits to fully fund their budget. We do this um, through the, by sub helping non-profits to figure out a way to create a profitable and sustainable organization. We believe that you don't have to go broke to make a difference and that you can make a living while making a difference. We want to make sure that you're not part of the statistics where at least 50% of nonprofits they close down within the first two years and in 10 years 30% also close down as well and so we are here to support you to help you and to assist you to ensure that you can have all the funding all the support you need to be able to do this great work that you're here to do so the month of March I made it and asked me any 10 question and so this is the story that we've been going through for the past 12 days where every day I come online and I just share some tips based on the questions that have been asked. So from yesterday's um, video, someone asked the question about they just hired a non-profit and they registered it with their own address and what should they do about it. So before I dive into today's topic, I'm going to quickly answer that question. So if you just started your non-profit and you're worried about the like personal and professional so the first thing i would i suggest is to say first and foremost if you don't have the money to rent an office for yourself can you look around to see are there organizations like churches or like other programs that they have space and based on the work that you do and what they do your work are complementary and so i'll give you an example when i first started my own nonprofit as well we didn't have the money in our budget to have our home building or to rent it so what we did was to speak to um, a school and so the school they had their own classes from 8 to 2 and we wanted our classes to be from 2 30 to 6 30 p.m and so what we did was to collaborate with them to say since your classes are going to be empty after 2 p.m can we come in and use your classes from 2 30 to 6 30 and so that was what we did so it, I didn't have to use my own personal address but because of that collaboration with that school after the school is over from 8 to 2 we come on at 2 30 and we are able to use that same address as the address of our organization so based on wherever you are look around to say who can i collaborate with how can i partner with maybe other businesses that complement what you do that in alignment with your mission and your vision and ask them about co-sharing in a space if, if that makes sense and then that way you can use their address for your organization another one that you can do let's say if that's not feasible for you is to look at co-working spaces there are a lot of co-working spaces that you can get for like not so expensive prices and so depending on the kind of city or state or country that you are in you can create that relationship where even if it's just a dex that you have you still get to use the address of that co-working space as well and so that's another way that you can do it and so some of them even have what they call virtual office you don't even have to go to the co-working space but you pay monthly and then you have a like a mailing address that they give to you that is assigned to your organization so i hope that helps you um for the person that asked the question about how to not use your own personal address for your organization's address as well so take advantage of this and hopefully over time you as an organization can afford to have your own place and you can get your own address as well i've also seen people that have used um, PO box and so but normally usually when you're registering for the non-profit you can use a PO box address but after you've registered you can definitely get the PO box address from the postcard office and that can be the address that you put as well so any of these three things of either collaborating with an existing organization who already has an address and using that that can work co-working space that gives you virtual address can also work and then also uh, getting a PO PO box can also be something that you can use to help you so i hope that helps with that said now i'm going to jump into today's topic which is about program design so i've gotten questions about how can i design my program in a way that it doesn't one second 
and my son is there. That's my fault. This is David. Say hello. Hello. Yeah, he's still sleeping. It's 5 30 a.m. here, so he's still around it. Okay, so we'll continue. So, anyway, to continue today, I said I was going to focus on program um, design. I've gotten questions around how do I design my program? How do I, because I'm a busy person, my non profit is not fully my. Um, my holy job right now i still work while i have my own business and i need help and support what does that look like how can i create a program where i can still do good and still be able to run my other life in that regard as well so one of the things and the tips that i give is that as a non-profit funder or somebody intending to start a non-profit you don't have to do your program every day of the week or every single week or every month so the way i advise my clients is that you design your program to match where you have your lifestyle you need to design your whatever program that you're doing for your organization to match your lifestyle especially if you're just starting and you don't have all the funding all the other team members and support to do the work you need to design your program to match your lifestyle so what do i mean by that so let's say for instance you're someone that you already have a nine to five job you are you have like other other responsibility like personal responsibility outside of just the job that you are doing in nine to five and so maybe right now this might not be the season of your life where you need to do your programs every single day so the first thing that i need you to do first and foremost is after you've decided that you want to start a non-profit or you want to do a project or a program to help the community is to now say okay how does this relate to my lifestyle what am i already committed to that i need to make sure that i keep in alignment with what i'm trying to do now and so we view your day to day and, and think about it in, in the sense of okay i want to do all of this work well i want to be able to show up for my job well i want to still make a difference in the community what does this look like how would this look like sometimes you may have to like adjust your schedule as well and so if you're just beginning and you're like okay i want to help this com community i want to help this particular population but i don't have the time to do it every single day so I need you to think about it again. Like, how can you effectively help that community or population in a way that it still aligns with your own life um, style? And that might mean like looking at it, so okay, maybe instead of offering a program every single day based on your lifestyle, based on your prior commitment, what you have right now is just to be able to do it monthly. So maybe once a month you do a workshop where for two hours that you can render in your schedule, these people can come together and then you teach or you train them on something and then you're good to go. So that can be one way. Or maybe for you, you're like, I cannot do monthly. Like it's a lot for me to do monthly. So another thing you can think is, okay, can you do it quarterly? Every quarter, can you do a program where like you bring people together and then maybe it's for one week in a quarter or for four days in a quarter or three days in a quarter and you do like a boot camp where they, they come in and then you teach them and then you know that that's all you're done till next quarter. So if you can do something weekly, if you cannot do it daily, think about your schedule. It's okay, once a month, maybe two hours, three hours workshop. That's all your schedule and your life, lifestyle can afford right now. So build your program around that. There is no law that says that because you're a non-profit, you must do your work every single day. Yes, maybe ideally that's the goal if you want to make that your full priority and your full job. But let's say right now you don't have the luxury of making it your full-time job. You still have other things you have to do. So think about it and make sure that it aligns with you. Like, can you, up, is it just three hours a month for a workshop that you can offer on a Saturday or Sunday or whatever day of the week? Then do that and plan your program like that. If monthly is not something you can afford to do right now, then think in quarters. Each, there are four quarters in a year. So that means you're doing at least four programs. And so think about it. If you plan it well, you can do something that is just like in one quarter, you do one program and you do it so well that people are still talking about it and they cannot wait for the next program they are going to do the next quarter as well. And so just because you started your nonprofit or you're thinking of starting, there's none that you have to do it every single day. I always believe and I tell people like, you need to start small to grow because you may have the vision to have a long term, like daily program or weekly program. But in the beginning, when you're still trying to stabilize yourself, when you're still trying to gather your team, when you're still trying to figure out what role you want to play, what difference you want to make, you don't have to do it every single day. You don't have to do it every single week. And so think about it and say, okay, what am I already committed to? I want to do this well. Because your goal is not to create a program that at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference. At the end of the day, you're not even 
better than the current programs that are currently in place right now and so the point of your program should be that you are doing more about quality not quantity alone if you just focus on quantity anybody can do any program they don't even have to have a non-profit to do their program right but if you focus on quality and delivering value and really saving life transforming life changing community for good then your focus should be more about quality than quantity so it's not about doing it daily it is just once a month and can do it well and it's power pack it's better than doing something daily that is washed down and at the end of the day there is no benefit to those that you're trying to serve at the end of the day and so when you think about designing your program make sure that it is in alignment with your lifestyle because Another thing I see with a lot of non-profits is what I call start and stop, start and stop. A lot of non-profits, they have this aspirational goal and so they, they overpack themselves, they overcome it in the beginning. And so because of that, they say, oh, we're going to do this daily. But then if they don't have, they don't have the team, they don't have the structure, they don't have the process, they don't even have the funding to do the program. So they end up disappointing the population, the community that they're supposed to serve. And I don't want that to be your case because already, think about it, in other, in the countries or communities you are in, the government officials, they're already disappointing the student. They're already disappointing the community. They're already disappointing the citizen. So if you say that you're going to be different, then be different. Don't now become part of that problem where you, you, sh you keep like instilling in people that you know what, you cannot trust anybody. You know what, everyone is not for you. You know what, D just like, no. I'd rather have you do it once and do it well than promise doing it every day and then being inconsistent. You show up today, you don't show up tomorrow. You show up for two days and then you stop. Stop doing the start and stop. That's why before you, you, you put anything out there, look at your lifestyle. Look at what you've already committed to. Look at the time that you have, the resources that you have right now and build your program from there. Build your program from there. Because if you can do that, then you can add more as you keep going and developing. As more people support your work, as you get more support, more sponsorship, more funding, more team members joining you, then it's easy for you to now improve the capacity to do that. But if you over commit yourself and you do it and, and you try to do everything and your, your foundation is working, think about the house. You know, in some part of the world, like in, during the rainy season, that's when a lot of houses collapse. Why? Because the foundation is terrible. Yeah, a lot of people, they like to do all the decoration on the asset, but if the foundation is wobby, if the foundation is not there, everything is going to crumble. So the same way for your program as well as a non-profit funder, you need to make sure that you start small. Take, like, start with what you can buy. Start with what you can commit to that you can show up. For, me, for instance, like for me, I decided that this month I'm going to come every single day for the next 31 days. And this is day 12. I've not missed that. How did I do that? I had to look at my schedule and say, what does this make sense? For me, every day that I start this life, is at, it's 5.30 a.m. For me, where I am living, it's 5.30 a.m. But I knew that that is what I can commit to because if I try to do it later in the day, like in the afternoon or in the evening, anything can happen in my life to disrupt it. But at least I know that I can control early in the morning. My children are still asleep but he woke up today right but at least i know that i can control that and so the same way when you're thinking of your program design and your program planning you need to create a program that makes sense for your lifestyle you need to create a program that makes sense for your lifestyle so that's the first thing the second thing i want you to think about also is like what is the essence of the program what are you trying to accomplish you need to have the end in mind what are you trying to change what is your theory of change what is it that you, what is the problem that you're trying to solve in the community with the population that you're serving what is the problem and how are you going to apply your solution is the problem you need or you want that's another thing you need to think about because if it's more of a want and they want is like they can have it but they can do without it they need is like they really need it they cannot do without it so i want you to start thinking of instead of creating programs that are like more of the want create programs that are focused on the need the need of the organ of the population the need of the community because if you focus on programs that focus on the need then it's easier for people to come it's easier for you to get the beneficiary the people to come and sign up for your program but if you do programs based on what people want not necessarily what they need then sometimes it's harder for you to fill your program and so part of your program design process should be to go into the community or talk to the population that you're trying to serve and ask them what are their challenges what are their problems it's easy for us to assume and think oh i think this is the issue i think this is what they need but before you make those assumptions have a conversation talk to a few people within that particular community within that particular 
population range that you want to serve to say tell us from your own perspective what is going on why has this been the problem how can we help how can we support you and so it's very essential that you take the time to learn about the problem from the beneficiary yes you might have an idea of what it is but honestly sometimes if we're not living in those situations ourselves it's harder for us to know exactly what is going on and so don't ever displace the point of speaking to those potential community or population you're trying to serve to ask them what do you need what is going on? What have you tried? What has worked? Because if you have, even if you're part of the, you know about the problem and you don't take the time to ask those that are going to benefit to say, okay, what have you tried? What has worked? You may, the solution you might bring up might be something that they've tried, but did not work. But if you take the time to really interview or speak to them or do a survey to say, tell us what is going on. Why is this not working? Why has this not worked in the past? And they tell you, then it's easier for you to go back to the table and come up with possible solution. Also, carry these people along. Don't just think that, oh, they're lesser than me. They are always going to know more about the situation than you. They are always going to be the expert on those problems, on those issues. And so, if you ignore them and you don't take the time to talk to them and put their voice and their feedback into your program design, then it's harder for them to want to come in and get it when you have those programs going. Because I've seen cases where people, they're so... Um, aspirational and then they'll come up with a program they think this is a problem they'll create the solution they'll get the resources and then nobody shows up so we don't want that to be what you it is about your own organization about what you do so the way to avoid that is to speak to those people the beneficiaries ask them what do they want because sometimes what we think they want may be different than what they want and so it's very important that you take the time to get to know these people and ask them for that as well then the third thing, and then I'm going to round up, is to also consider what resources do you have right now. So the, depending on how you set up your program, whether you're doing it weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever it is that you do, you need to also think about, okay, do we have enough resources to do this work? What will it take? So you need to count the cost. It's not enough to, for you to just think, I have this problem, I have this solution, this is the population and the community I want to serve. But what is it going to take to be able to accomplish it in terms of your time, your resources, your energy, and even people? What is it going to take? What is it going to take in order to be able to accomplish this as well? And so it's very essential that you take the time to really count the cost to say, okay, if we're going to do this program monthly or weekly, what is it going to cost us? So you need to have a budget. You can just hope and wish that. Oh, people just fund us like for you to be able to get funding to do your program people need to know exactly what is it going to cost to do so let's say you're working with young children and you're like okay we want to provide after school tutorial so you need let's say you want to work with 50 students right and let's say you need 10 tutors so are these tutors going to be paid or is it going any they're paid how much are they going to be paid what hours are they going to work and so how much does that look like so let's say you're paying a tutor ten dollars per hour right and they, want, they need to work 10 hours per week so that means 10 times 10 that's 100 dollars right then understand 10 tutors that's at least a thousand dollars so you're saying that in a month if you were to implement this solution to this problem of students failing their examination whether internal or external exam then it's going to cost you at least a thousand dollars to get 10 tutors who can work 10 hours per week to work with the student and so once you have that then it's easier to go to people to say can you help us can you support us in helping to ensure that these students, they, they are able to reach their potential? This is how you can support us. If you sponsor a student, who they'll have a tutor who can do this and that. And so, just to recap and wrap up, the first thing I talked about is ensuring that first and foremost, you build your program around your lifestyle. If you already have a job, if you already have other priorities, if you're already committed to other things, Take the time to make sure that whatever you set up for your program, for your non-profit or your NGO, it makes sense for your lifestyle. It's not good for you to say you're going to do something and then quit on it and be inconsistent. You, then you're no better than the government. You're no better than the people that already promised and failed this population or the community you want to serve. So it's highly important that you take the time to really build your program around your lifestyle. If it's just weekly, that you can do once a week, do it once a week. If it's once a month for two hours, three hours, that you can do, do it 
if it's quarterly that you can afford to do right now based on your lifestyle then do it i rather have you be consistent quarterly monthly than for you to say you're going to do something daily and then you're not consistent it doesn't help you it doesn't help the population you're trying to serve and doesn't help you to get the result that you want the second thing i talked about um <coughs> excuse me in terms of your program design is to speak to the potential beneficiary the community or the population don't just as job yes your idea might be great and wonderful but you need to speak to those potential people the people they are going to always be the expert on the problem so talk to them interview them do a survey ask them what have you tried what has worked what has not worked so getting those feedback from those beneficiary can help you to design a better solution that will last and that will make sense and then the last thing i went over was making counting the cost what is it going to cost you in time, in resources, in, in power to be able to do this work in people? And so once you know and you're able to count the cost of what you need, then it's easier for you to say, okay, get people to support your work and to also um, support the work that you do. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have a specific question, please drop it in the chat or you can send a DM. I'm happy to definitely um, respond after. Also, I have a free masterclass coming up next month on April 5th called the Fully Funded Plan. And so in one hour, I'm going to help you design how to fully fund your program for the year or for the quarter, depending on how you set yours up. And so go to the link in the bio and definitely um, come join us. It's free if you show up live. And I'm really looking forward to serving you and helping you and if you have a specific question that i didn't cover today or in my past um life series feel free to send a dm or leave a comment and i will definitely respond to it when i get it again thank you for being a champion for good thank you for choosing to do this work i know you can have chosen to do any other thing with your life but you're interested in this um in this um industry you want to help people you want to save life you want to change life you want to transform community and that is worthy you're a champion and i'm so happy and excited to be in your corner and to support you along this way as well and just to encourage you that you know that even no matter what is going on right now don't give up even looks as if your work is thankless don't give up i promise you you are needed more than ever you are needed and what you do matters in the world and i'm so honored to be in this um, industry with you and helping you to also be part of being able to do your work well and definitely change a lot of lives and make a lot of difference so i hope you have a wonderful weekend i'll be back again tomorrow at 5 30 central time and i think 12 30 west african time and um if you have questions before then please leave it in the chat and again, enjoy your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you and keep doing good. Bye for now. Bye everyone. And I'll go ahead and do this.